Well, everybody's heard me rant and rave about the 90 essential nutrients forever, okay? 60 minerals, 16 vitamins, 12 essential amino acids, 3 essential fatty acids. And the definition of an essential nutrient is um, if you are deficient in them, you get diseases, all of which are fatal. Uh, you can get uh, many of these diseases are reversible, uh, curable, if you will. For, for instance, I can get rid of night blindness, people who can't see at night. You give them vitamin A and night blindness goes away. You have rickets, you give them vitamin D and rickets goes away. Uh, you have um, vitamin E deficiency. Uh, you can have uh, uh, what's called hemolytic anemia, where your blood cells break apart. They're very fragile membranes. Uh, that can be prevented and cured with vitamin E. Vitamin K uh, prevents uh, things like blood clotting problems. Also, it need, is needed for bone health. Uh, EFAs prevent uh, blood clots in the brain, blood clots in coronary arteries. A calcium deficiency can uh, produce kidney stones. Supplementing with calcium can prevent kidney stones, osteopenia, osteoporosis, etc. Iron deficiency anemia, right? How do you fix iron deficiency anemia? You cure that by giving iron supplements. And then what about B12? Well, there's B12 anemia, very special B12 anemia, uh, folic acid anemia. You give folic acid, folic acid anemia goes away. B12 anemia, uh, called pernicious anemia, that goes away and you get B12. B1 deficiency causes um, something called beriberi which has all kinds of different symptoms and so forth. And I can prevent and cure beriberi by supplementing with B1. I can prevent and cure pellagra by supplementing with B3. And so all the 90 essential nutrients are required to prevent and reverse many diseases. Some of them, for instance, if a baby's born with spina bifida, it's a surgical case after the baby's born. They were folic acid deficient, so you can't give them folic acid and cure it after the baby's born, but it is preventable. So I want everybody to get a hold of the book Epigenetics. The subtitle is The Death of the Genetic Theory of Disease Transmission, and, of course, epigenetics is a new term. Many of you are not familiar with it. It's a new term that deals with the fact that our genes, our DNA and RNA, all require nutrients to meet their genetic potential for optimal health and longevity. In other words, you can have perfect genes to live to be 200 years of age, but if you're not getting the 90 essential nutrients, the proper proportions to support healthy function of your genes, your DNA and your RNA, you're not going to live to be 200. Although you have the genetic potential to do that, you do require these nutrients to pull it off. Well, how many essential nutrients are there? 90, 16 minerals, 16 vitamins, uh, 12 amino acids, and 3 essential fatty acids. Now, they are required for your genes, your DNA, and RNA to maximize their genetic potential for health and longevity, to prevent birth defects, and so on. And so you have to appreciate you must supplement with these things because you can't get them out of your food anymore. Here's where the story comes in, epigenetics, the book, the death of the genetic theory of disease transmission. I want everybody to read this book because the genetic theory of disease transmission is a dead theory. It was dead, oh, in 1977 when I discovered the first non-human case of cystic fibrosis in a monkey. And by then I'd already done thousands of autopsies in animals and people, tens of thousands, millions of chemistries and slides with special stains. And I knew from tracking back and taking biopsies of non-related colony mates of this monkey, because they also had cystic fibrosis, the cystic fibrosis wasn't a genetically transmitted disease. It was caused by deficiencies of nutrients. Tracked it down, figured out what it was, and was able to reproduce it. And so the same thing is true with muscular dystrophy. Muscular dystrophy is not a genetically transmitted disease. It's a disease. It is an epigenetic disease. I can prevent it. I can reverse it. Same thing with um, things like cystic fibrosis. I can prevent it, and I can reverse it. I can prevent spina bifida, but I can't reverse it with nutrients. Okay? I can prevent rickets with vitamin D, and I can, I can cure rickets with vitamin D. I can prevent night blindness with vitamin A, and I can cure night blindness with vitamin A. I can prevent um, beriberi with vitamin B1, and I can cure beriberi with vitamin B1. I can prevent pernicious anemia with vitamin B12, and I can cure pernicious anemia with vitamin B12. I think you're beginning to get the picture. Again, epigenetics is a new term. It's the title of my new book out. Be the first one in your block to get it, epigenetics. The Death of the Genetic Theory of Disease Transmission. Contact your Young Givey Associate today, and you're going to be glad you did because this is going to add, this book and the information in it will allow you to add many healthy years to your life, many healthy years to your kids' and grandkids' life. It is that important. Your genes and your DNA and RNA cannot work without these nutrients. Now, just think of a Lamborghini. You need six quarts of very expensive oil, and that, if you get put that six quarts of oil and change it as frequently as the maintenance manual says, you'll be able to get 300,000 miles out of that engine. If you put six quarts of Texas dirt in that car instead of oil because you know that there's some oil in that Texas dirt, that car is not going to go the distance of one 
tank of gasoline, 400 miles. Now, you know it has potential to go 300,000 miles, but if you just put dirt from Texas in there and hope there's some oil in it, that engine is going to seize up before you get through a full tank of gas, and you're not going to get the 300,000 miles. You won't even get 400 miles. Same thing is true with your body. Even though you have the genetic potential to go 80, 90, 100, 120, 150, 200 years, you're not going to get there from here unless you have all 90 essential nutrients, 60 minerals, 16 vitamins, 12 essential amino acids, 3 essential fatty acids. Some are so important that they can actually double the lifespans, double blind studies, you can actually double the lifespans of laboratory animals when they're given just very small amounts of these rare earths, things like europium, things like samarium, ytterbium, yttrium, neodymium, prostodymium. These rare earths will double the lifespans of laboratory animals. And guess what? They're part of the 90 essential nutrients. I've been taking them twice a day for 68 years. How about you? Well, stick with us. We're back with more Truth, Justice, and the Longevity Way on Dead Doctors Don't Lie for these messages. Okay, Doug, what pearls of wisdom do you have for us today? Well, I have this one here. I believe, Doc, it vindicates you. Because the headline of this Fox News story is getting too little sun could be risky, a study says. They say uh, they know that uh, getting too much sun could lead to skin cancer, but getting too little sun could also be risky, especially in regions with limited sunshine. Now, this was actually published in the journal Internal Medicine, and they uh, went during this course of this study. It went on for a couple of years, from 1990 to 1992. It was studying Swedish women. Uh, they looked at about 30,000 Swedish women between the ages of 25 and 64, and the women reported on questionnaires how often they sunbathed or used tanning beds, and if they traveled to other regions where there was more sun exposure, and then the sun exposure was scored, uh, those av completely avoiding sun as a zero and the highest exposure as a four took in other risk factors as to whether they had a history of malignant melanoma or had red hair, because apparently that is a risk factor for melanoma. And during the course of the study, they subsequently uh, ended up tracking it up till 2011, and they found 267 cases of melanoma and just over 2,500 deaths from all causes during the study period. And they found that the women who avoided the sun were twice as likely to die from any cause, including skin cancer, than those, than those who had the greatest sun exposure. And they say sunlight, of course, is a main source of vitamin D, and the deficiencies in D have been linked to cardiovascular deaths as well as more aggressive cancers, according to the CDC. Of course, they recommend... Uh, limiting prolonged sun exposure, wearing sunscreens at a minimum of SPF 15. And so, uh, yeah, leave it up to the Swedes to prove how stupid our doctors are here. You know, having us avoid the sun, all these, you know, you've been, you've been talking about that for years, Doc, you know, where, uh, you know, making fun of these people that, that wear the big hats and, and stay out of the sun and wear SPF 900 and all that kind of stuff. And you know, it's interesting, uh, if you ever look up, the toxicity of those, the chemicals that are in those sunscreens, they're very toxic. Well, yeah, and of course it's kind of interesting that um, the people who stay out of the sun have more aggressive and more numbers of melanoma. They have a higher rate than the people who are actually out in the sun. And, of course, sun is a very healthy thing for your skin, stimulates um, skin growth. Uh, you can actually make your own vitamin D through the skin uh, by the sun uh, irradiating the uh, cholesterol in your skin. And, of course, it's kind of funny. When, when you get on a cholesterol-restricted diet, you take cholesterol-lowering drugs, you stay out of the sun. Let's see here. You don't make any vitamin D. So you, you, it aggravates things like osteopenia, osteoporosis, osteoarthritis, degenerative arthritis, bone-to-bone -bone arthritis. Uh, you begin to shrink. You have peripheral neuropathies because your discs are shrinking. And you stay out of the sun. Your blood calcium goes up because your parathyroid glands actually sucking more calcium out of your bones, and then you begin to have a high risk of, of kidney stones, and you begin to get all kinds of really weird things happening um, because you, you, you stay out of the sun. You don't have enough vitamin D3. It's absolutely crazy. And, of course, it contributes to, when you stay out of the sun, it actually contributes to things like Alzheimer's disease because you can't get your cholesterol doing what it's supposed to do and without cholesterol, you're going to get Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's disease is a combination deficiency of nutrients, including cholesterol and vitamin E and vitamin C. And it's just this whole thing is, is crazy. 
there's actually a new um, uh, magazine out where doctors say the most dangerous things on earth are vitamins and minerals. <laughs> and so thank you for warning people. Get out in the sun for a half hour in the morning. In the morning, 9 to 9.30, 10 to 10.30. I wouldn't get out in the peak, especially if you're a redhead. I'd stay out of the sun, uh, you know, from 1 o'clock to 3 o'clock. Anybody, only mad dogs and Englishmen go out in the noonday sun. We'll be back after these messages. Okay, Doug, let's go to callers. Let's head to New York, and Andrew, you're on with Dr. Wallach. Oh, Andrew, you're on the air. How are you doing? Yes, sir, very fine, thank you. How can we help you? Um, I have to apologize in advance. I have a strange cough. I've had it for over a year, and uh, I've had many tests done, uh, biopsies done, had a swallow test done, and they cannot figure out what's wrong with me or why I'm coughing. Next week, I'm supposed to be going to a pulmonary doctor to have my lungs checked out. Okay, well, let me ask you a question. I'm assuming they've tested you for things like valley fever and all these, you know, yes. you know, all these cat scratch fever and all this weird stuff, right? <clears throat> they have, yes. Okay, now, uh, how much do you weigh, Andrew? I weigh 190. Okay, and how tall are you, sir? 5'4". Okay, so you're a little overweight there. Yes. Now, mm -hmm. tell me... Uh, do you have any history of skin problems, any eczema, dermatitis, psoriasis, or rosacea on your face? Well, no, I did have eczema a long time ago, like maybe 20 years ago. Okay. Did you ever have any asthma as a kid? Yes, well, I, I have a list. I, I have diabetes, high blood pressure. Now, wait a minute. Diabetes type 1 or type 2? Type 2. Okay. High, high blood, blood pressure. I'm sorry. Yeah, you have high blood pressure. Asthma. Mm -hmm. And I do have allergies. Like okay, the now, problems and all that stuff. So that you have this chronic cough and you have asthma and they can't figure out what the problem is? No. Well, I would fire all your doctors. They are very, very stupid. <laughs> hey, now, Char? Yes. <laughs> this is a Char thing, dear. I know. He, he's he got a gluten intolerance. That's his problem. He's not. A, he's got to get on a gluten-free diet immediately. Yep. Now, a couple more questions here, Andrew. Char is 100% right. Now, if you ever, did you have your appendix out as a kid? No, I haven't. Okay. Do you have any brothers and sisters? Oh, I have. Yes, I'm the, the youngest of 13. Okay. You're the youngest of 13. Do you know if any of your brothers and sisters had appendicitis? Um, no, I don't. Do you know if any of them had asthma? Most, uh, I would say a good portion of them. I would have say asthma? at least five of them. Wow. Okay. Well, your mother gave this gluten intolerance to the whole family. You need to warn all your brothers and sisters. You need to warn your mom if she's still alive. My, warn all of her brothers and sisters and any of your cousins who are born to your aunt on your mother's side. Everybody's got a gluten intolerance. Stay away from the doctors. They will kill you. They'll test you to death, okay? Okay, they will do some weird things to your lungs, and they will kill you. So here's what you do. Uh, you get on a free diet, as Char said, absolutely drop-dead gluten-free diet. No wheat, no barley, no rye, no oats. And for Christmas presents, birthday presents, I would give all of your siblings and all of your uh, uh, sort of cousins and nieces and nephews uh, from your mother's side, uh, give them the audio cassette tape, or excuse me, the, the CD called Serial Killer. Serial Killer, so you can find all the hidden places. Okay, now hang on. We'll come back with you, Andrew, and we're going to give you a supplement program after these messages. Okay, Doug, we're going right back to New York, and Andrew. Okay, Char, 190 pounds. What would you give this fella? He's got type 2 diabetes. He's got high blood pressure. And, of course, he's got gluten intolerance, he's got asthma, he's got eczema. But the diabetes and the high blood pressure are two things that he's uh, it. talking about. Yep. He needs two healthy blood sugar packs, and he needs the ultimate daily. Okay, very good. Exactly. It's spot on. You get 100%. A plus. Okay. So, Andrew, here's where we're going. As Char said, you need two of the healthy blood sugar packs. I want you to take one ounce of the Osteo FX Plus at breakfast and dinner. Two scoops of the Beyond Tangerine 2.0 Nutri Crystals at breakfast and dinner. Three of the EFA Plus as a breakfast and dinner. And three of the Sweeties at breakfast and dinner. Your blood sugar is going to drop like a rock, and so you should test your fasting blood sugar every morning before you medicate yourself, whether it's in pills or insulin. And as your blood sugar drops, you will take less and less medication as your doctors have taught you to do. When you're five days in a row without medication and your blood sugar is below 100, you no longer need medication. How long do you need to take the 90 essential nutrients? How long do you need to take the healthy blood sugar pack? For life. Now, for the high blood pressure, Char said, 
You need the ultimate daily tablets. They're designed to support and promote healthy blood pressure. They're designed to support and promote healthy blood flow through obstructed arteries in your brain, your eyes, coronary arteries, and also in your kidneys. And um, so I want you to take three of the ultimate daily tablets at breakfast, three dinner. That'll be one bottle a month. And then call us every two weeks. You're going to be one of our poster boys. Uh, if you want to, you can speed things up on the weight loss. You'll start losing weight when you do this. Again, no fried foods, no processed meats with nitrates and nitrites, no oils, no olive oil, no coconut oil, no margarine, mayonnaise, salad dressing, cooking oils, and no gluten, no wheat, barley, rye, or oats. With all your problems, I would get yourself and all your brothers and sisters and cousins and nieces and nephews the CD called Serial Killers. And, of course, um, if you want to speed up weight loss, if, you're, if your relatives have weight problems also, get um, if they need to lose 50 pounds or less, like yourself, I'd go ahead and get one bottle a month of the ASAP. Take a dropper full under your tongue 30 minutes before each meal. If they need to lose 50 pounds or more, I'd have them put a dropper full under the tongue twice a day, 30 minutes before each meal and 15 minutes before each meal. That'll be two bottles a month. And call us every two weeks. We want to know your weight. We want to know your blood pressure levels. We want to know your blood sugar levels. Let us know how your eczema is doing, your asthma is doing. Let us know how this chronic cough goes. And I would file all, fire all your doctors. Go online. Tell them, look, this is Andrew. I want you to think of me as Donald Trump, and you are the apprentice, and you're fired. And put 100 exclamation marks after fired so they know you're yelling at them. Do not just not show up again. Fire them. They have to know how badly they missed it. Okay. Do you have time to start another one, Doug? No. Nope. Well, that answers that, where you have to run to one of those message moments. We'll be back with more truth, justice, and the young duty way after these messages. Let's head to the Philippines, and Dale, you're on with Dr. Wallach. Hello, Dale, you're on the air. Hi, Dr. Wallach. Yes, sir. Real quick, uh, I'm on disability. Uh, I have a type 2 diabetic. My blood sugar currently right, right now is about 130 to 140. I do have a complication, such as the swelling in my left foot and the ankle, uh, particularly when I, I eat the wrong foods. Mm-hmm. I have peripheral neuropathy. Also have diabetes retinopathy, which occurred about three years ago. The bleeding of the eye, just one eye. I also was diagnosed in 2002 with stenosis of the cervical spine with L4, L5, and L6. And recently, I had pain in my back so bad that I had a radiologist examine uh, examine that tray. Said I had minimal uh, osteophyte. Uh, and I just need to know that what, I want to get better, but I also want to know, can I see again? What, what, can, what can you do to help me with my eye problem with the bleeding you, Wait, whoa, eye? whoa, whoa. Are you considered legally blind? No, no. If I, if I close my, my left eye, I can't drive. It's, everything is blurry in my, in my right eye. If, if I lose my, my left eye like my right eye, then I wouldn't be able to drive. Okay. How much do you weigh, sir? I weigh about 185. I'm six feet three. Okay. Now, do you have any history of skin problems or asthma or, or belly problems of any kind? No. Okay, good. Okay, Char, this is a Char thing. Okay, this fellow has type 2 diabetes. Uh, he's got complications from that, retinopathy. He's got, you know, eye problems. Uh, he's got spinal stenosis, which is a manifestation of osteoporosis. He's got osteophytes, which is essentially um, bone spurs. And uh, he's got all these um, uh, peripheral neuropathies in his neck and his lower back. And so what did you do for him? Uh, he needs two healthy blood sugar packs, but he also needs Ultimate Daily, and he needs selenium. And what would you do for his osteoporosis and arthritis? Glucogel. Well, there you go. Very good. Okay, so at 185 pounds, Dale, here's what we would do. We'd have you take two of the healthy blood sugar packs, as Char said, uh, there would be one ounce of the X Plus at breakfast dinner, two scoops of the Ontan Tangerine 2.0 Neutral Crystals breakfast dinner, three of the EFA Pluses twice a day, and three of the Sweeties twice a day. Check your fasting blood sugar as your blood sugar drops. As it gets below 100 for five days in a row without medication, you don't need medication anymore, but you must stay on the healthy blood sugar pack forever, for life. And then I would add to that two bottles of glucogel, so you can take 15 glucogel a day, five at breakfast, five at lunch, five at dinner, and these are designed to support and promote maintenance, repair of cartilage, ligaments, tendons, connective tissue, disc between the vertebrae in your neck and your lower back, and also to support the healthy bone itself and bone matrix and the, the, the osteophytes will actually go back down into the bones. And the retinopathy, I would use our Vision FX, take three of those twice a day, there's two bottles a month, 
And let's see here. Um, 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 I think that covers it. Okay, so let's go there and give us a call every couple of weeks. Let us know how your diabetes is doing. I want to know what your blood sugar is. I want to know uh, how your vision is after two weeks and four weeks and six weeks. Let us know about the swelling. Um, if you want to, you can do, yeah, you can throw in the ultimate daily tablets. I'd take three of those twice a day as one bottle a month. And uh, give us a call every couple of weeks. We want to know your blood pressure, your blood sugar, your weight, how your vision is going. And uh, don't forget the Vision FX. Throw those in three twice a day. Uh, that's two bottles a month. Okay, Doug, let's go to callers. All right, let's head to Colorado. Ed Joyce, you're on with Dr. Wallach. Oh, well, Joyce, you're on the air. Hello, Joyce. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am, I can hear you now. Okay. This is for my mother. She's 74 years old. She weighs 130 pounds, and she's 5'7". She has dementia. Um, she About two years ago, she had surgery. She had a hysterectomy. And a couple months after that, she started beating the hell out of my dad, kicked him out of the house, and all kinds of things. We put her on the healthy brain pack, and things got pretty good for a while. Um, but she's gone back to the hospital, and they say that she's got heart valve fibrillation. In the middle of August, she's going to have a pulmonary test and an EKG done. Um, she is on oxygen right now, and um, she's on a few different uh, medications. You like know, when, when, the doctor, okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. when the doctor said she has dementia, did they name it? Does she have vascular dementia? Does she have Alzheimer's disease or Korsakoff syndrome, or what's she got? Dad, did they name I, that? I, no, not, not to my knowledge, they didn't. Okay. okay, we don't have time for discussions here now. Okay, so the answer you don't know. Okay, so does she have any other issues? Does she have any diabetes or arthritis? No, she was on no meds no. before she went into the hospital. Well, we learned not to go to the hospital, didn't we? No. Okay. <laughs> so, um, Char, what would you do for somebody, what would you do for somebody uh, who has dementia, losing her memory, and this is not unusual for people to get um, aggressive, uh, do really things that they wouldn't do normally or before they got dementia. What would you do for somebody with dementia? Um, I would give her the de-stress, and I would also give her the ultimate daily, and I would give her uh, selenium, too. Okay, what would you do for her 90? Well, she needs to be on a, if there's nothing else wrong with her, she just needs to be on a healthy but, you know, healthy start pack if she doesn't have diabetes or anything. Well, would you consider the brain and heart pack? Well, brain and heart pack, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So that gives her the selenium anyway. Then. Yes, yes, exactly. So I would give her uh, 130 pounds, one healthy brain and heart pack per month. I would also get an extra bottle of selenium so she could have three at breakfast, three at dinner. That would be um, a tablespoon, which is a half ounce of the Osmo X Plus at breakfast and dinner. Uh, she would get to one scoop of the Beyond Tangerine 2.0 breakfast and dinner. The three EFA pluses, she'd have one um, at each meal, and the three EFAs, uh, one at each meal, or she could have three EFA pluses at breakfast and three EFAs at dinner time. And because she has this fibrillation stuff going on, uh, has, she, has she shrunk any in height, Joyce, do you know, since she was 20 years old? A little bit. Half inch, an bit. inch? A little bit. Yeah, she's shrunk a little bit. Okay. So I would also give her some glucogel. I'd give her two bottles of glucogel so she could take 15 a day. The purpose there, of course, is to support and promote maintenance repair of those discs between the vertebrae, help get them thicker, push the vertebrae apart, take the pressure off the roots um, of the uh, four spinal nerves coming out from between T1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and that's going to, um, um, what should I say, support the healthy function of those nerves. And what they do is they actually regulate heartbeat. They actually um, regulate the um, heart rhythm. And a lot of times when people get atrial fibrillation, they get rapid heartbeat called tachycardia uh, from positional change. What's happening is those, those vertebrae, which are too close together now because the vertebrae or the um, uh, disc have shrunk, um, the disc will get thicker again because you're going to support and promote maintenance repair, and they will get thicker then, push the vertebrae apart, take the pressure off, off the roots of those spinal nerves. And oftentimes, there's no guarantee, but oftentimes it's a very high percentage, you're going to get a... Uh, more regular heartbeat, you're going to get a regular pulse, uh, you're going to get a regular rhythm. And so all this just works together. Give us a call every couple of weeks after you start this. Be sure to keep her away from sugar. Absolutely no fried foods, no processed meats, no oils, and absolutely drop dead, no gluten. Stick with us. We'll be back with more Truth, Justice, and the Young Jibbity Way on Dead Doctors Don't Lie after these messages. We're back 
with Dead Doctors Don't Lie on the ZBS radio network. Dr. Joel Wallach here for Young Jiminy, 90 for Life Crusade. And Doug, let's go to callers. Let's head to Virginia. And uh, Tammy, you're on with Dr. Wallach. Hello, Tammy. You're on the air. Hi, Dr. Wallach. How, how can um, we help you? Um, my friend um, back in March fell out with a seizure. They sent him to UVA, and he has two brain tumors in his head on the left side. I told him, I was like, look, we need to call this doctor. This doctor, I believe, can help us. They said, told him to get his affairs in order. It was inoperable. Um, I tell you, he's just, he was in the Vietnam War when he was 18. The man has just gone through so much. Yeah, how, how old is he now? 64. Okay, what does he weigh, do you know? He weighs 150. 150 pounds, okay. Yes, and do, do they have a name for these tumors in the brain? Tarcinoma. Tarcinoma. It's not a muscle. It's a fatty um, tumor. It's two fatty tumors. It's not a muscle tumor. And it's the, not a blood vessel fatty, tumor. Fatty tumors in the brain? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, are they benign or are they cancerous? Well... They haven't come back with that. He just had that surgery where they cut the side of his head off mm-hmm. and on Tuesday and where they awakened him during that. So then they kept talking to him, and they they haven't come back with what they put 150 okay, so they, stitches in. Yeah, um, they took biopsies. I, I don't care how many stitches he's got. <laughs> okay. I need to know the biopsy. Uh, uh, what they found, okay? I need to know the name of the tumor. Okay. okay. That's what I need to know, the name of the tumor. Now, fatty tumors are highly unusual inside the brain. Um, okay. There are some that are made from cholesterol, but these are benign tumors, okay? Uh, they're called cholestatomas. Uh, and they're found in the choroid plexus in the ventricles of the brain. And um, they can be the size of a pea. They can be the size of a grape. But they're not cancerous, and so... Uh, I'd be very interested to know what what the real scientific name is. Now, Char, you know of there are certain brain cancers that are caused by mineral deficiencies. Which mineral deficiency do you know of that cause brain cancers? A lack of gallium. Gallium, you're exactly right. Okay. And so here's a case that a 150-pound guy, uh, I'd have him uh, take uh, two of the healthy brain and heart packs per month, two of the healthy brain and heart packs per month, you know, full dose of him at breakfast, full dose of him at dinner time, and he's going to get the gallium uh, by doing that. And also, um, have him take the um, Z radical two ounces a day. This is going to give him the few coitin, uh, which um, is legendary, you know, in in the South Pacific uh, for supporting the immune system when people have chronic, serious, life-threatening diseases like cancer. And so I'd have him take an ounce of that twice. It is two uh, quarts per month of the Z radical liquid, tastes very good, put it with some water. And um, I would also get his auric points, his antioxidant points above 100,000. He could do that several ways. Uh, he can do a six pieces of our triple treat chocolate a day. That'll raise his auric points. Again, that's going to support his immune system, 100,000 auric points a day. Or he can take the, the Fucoid Z, um, which is some more uh, of that Fucoidin. And uh, he could take uh, three of those Fucoid Z three times a day, and that'll get him up over 100,000 uh, of the um, uh, auric points. Or he could take the Cell Shield RTQ, five of those twice a day. That'll get him up over 100,000. And, of course, he has to stay away from all the inflammatory foods. Anything that's going to drive that tumor. When you find out the name of it, give us a call. And so let us know what it is. We can be more specific here. But he cannot have any fried foods, no processed meats. That means no deli slices, sandwich meat, sausage, ham, bacon, bologna, salami. He cannot have any oils, no olive oil, no coconut oil, no margarine, mayonnaise, salad dressing, cooking oils, and he cannot have any gluten, no wheat, barley, rye, and oats. And this is just a start. You call us, let us know what the diagnosis is so we know exactly what we're dealing with. We can be a little more specific. Well, thank you, everybody. A great question today. Thank you so much, Shar. Super job as usual. Thank you, Doug and RJ. Superlative job as usual. God bless each and every one of you. God bless our troops. God bless our Navy SEALs. And God bless America. <laughs> 